us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your ever-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, everyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God had anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and of the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, though which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as the first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to, to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping laying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrapping lying there 
and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, and one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. So, scientists have recently discovered something that's pretty shocking. And it is a bummer, but it's backed up with about two million years of evolutionary history, so it's almost incontrovertible. Apparently, every human life ends in death. <laughs> it's a very striking fact. And most of us try and ignore this push this way off to the periphery of our mental experience. But even out there on the periphery, this consciousness of death, it has an effect. So every issue of scarcity, every issue of resources, ultimately becomes for me a matter of life and death. If I don't have enough money, I'm going to be out on the street, my family's going to be hungry, we could die. So I need resources to keep a roof over my head today, and 10 years from now, and 30 years from now, and 50 years from now, which is actually a lot of resources. So I have to stockpile quite a lot to keep myself safe. And anybody who threatens to take my resources, or threatens to threaten to take my resources, I have to fight them with everything I've got, because it's a matter of life and death. I don't want to be too close to the wrong people. I don't want to put myself in any dangerous situations. I'm constantly aware of this fragility of my life. And what's more, I realize I'm not going to be around long. So I have this nagging feeling that I really don't matter very much. And so I have to impress the world and impress myself with all of my achievements. 
to pretend that I really do matter. I have to show you how smart I am, how accomplished I am, how attractive I am, how many followers I have on Instagram. I have to be put up this facade to kind of cover over this coming, looming emptiness. It's disturbing and terrifying. But what if you were the one exception to the rule? That Superman-like, Wonder Woman-like bullets bounced off you, knives just sort of bent like bananas against your adamantine skin, that no question of scarcity or danger or anything else could touch you. You were just utterly invulnerable to the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. What would you do with your life? Would you rush into burning buildings and rescue kittens and puppies? Would you go to a battlefield and comfort and care for the fallen? What, 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 would, what would your life look like if you were completely invulnerable to death? So when I was young, I used to think that Easter was kind of about something similar to the scene in Huckleberry Finn when Huck walks into his own funeral. Everyone's like, oh, Jesus isn't dead after all. This is great. Let's celebrate. And then I got a little older and I realized, okay, he was actually dead, but sort of like Orpheus, he somehow got out of the underworld. And we're big Jesus fans, so hooray, this is fantastic. Let's say hallelujah, let's put up some flowers. But as it turns out, I was wrong on both counts. We don't exalt in the resurrection. We don't say that Easter is the greatest of all Christian feasts just because Jesus rose from the dead. Instead, because in his rising from the dead, Jesus destroyed death. So Jesus is God incarnate. And when death took this human body, it swallowed eternity. The heat of the love of God totally overpowered and destroyed the coldness of death. The glistering light of the glory of God completely illuminated all of the darkness of death. And death was like an overinflated balloon or like a boa constrictor trying to swallow a grand piano. Death exploded, was broken, was destroyed. As St. John Chrysostom said in a sermon he preached almost 1,700 years ago, death took a body and met God face to face. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took that which was seen and fell upon the unseen. So you, now, are actually untouchable by death. You now are Wonder Woman. You now are Superman. Death has zero claim on you, zero hold on you. You are technically immortal, which is astonishing. And so, you are actually free. You are free to be as profligate and generous as you want with your resources, not worrying about scarcity. You are free to make relationships with scary or threatening people. You are free to rush into the battlefield or the ER during a pandemic. You are free to sit down on the sidewalk with a homeless person and share their sandwich. You are freed for love because death no longer has its hooks into you. When the armistice that concluded World War I was signed, It was signed at 5.45 in the morning. And on the paper it said, the war officially ends at 11 a.m. So for about four hours, bombs continued to rain down. People continued to go over the walls of trenches. People continued to lose their lives to gain two feet of ground. But it was pointless. The war was over. The victory was decisive. And that's what your life looks like now. The victory is decisive. The war is over. The power of sin and evil and death is broken, but the world has not yet gotten the memo. And so it is upon us, Christians, to proclaim this gospel of freedom. This gospel of freedom from pride, from freedom from scarcity, from freedom from fear, freedom 
to love. John Chrysostom concluded that same sermon by saying, O oh, death, where is your sting? Hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen and you are overthrown. Christ is risen and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen and life reigns. Christ is risen and not one dead person remains in the grave. For Christ, being raised from the dead, is become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and dominion unto ages of ages. Amen. Affirming together the Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one meeting with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became our and was made man. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We give thanks for Christine Waldman, who was baptized last night during our Easter vigil service. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor, another one, honor one another and serve the common good. We pray especially for the people in Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, and for stability in the Middle East during this time of violence and war. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to honor your, honor, your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Mary Beth Evans, Pat Martin, Irene Colando, Haley Morris, Ashley Shackley, Janice Green, George Olivar, Sarah Cooley, Deborah Lind, Cameron Cunningham, Don Ratner, Joseph Diane Curtis III, and Stephanie Curtis, and Christy and Jay Hoagland. Lord, in your mercy. 
We commend to your mercy all who have died. We pray especially for Cami Hedges, Sandra McNamara, Marlene Jancis Stewart, and Curtis Harris Jr., and Clifford Bond, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with Alban and all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Spirit now and forever. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry if we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please take a moment to greet one another in Christ's peace. market it's like packed this is great um if you are visiting us this morning at st albans we just want to say what an honor it is that you chose to spend your easter sunday with us it is such a blessing to have you here especially if you are a visitor named uh, bishop marianne thank you so much for being here what a blessing church is always this good i'm just going to put that out there uh now, we, we do hope that you'll come and join us again. If you have any questions about our service, the traditions of the Episcopal Church, please do talk to myself, Emily, Joy Mel, the bishop. Uh, we would love to talk to you about St. Albans. After this service, we have coffee hour in the Columbarium, just out these doors in the outdoor area. Uh, we have a sea of donuts. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have a special speaker for our forum who is like a six-foot bunny in a waistcoat. Uh, no, he's not actually here, but... There are a lot of eggs hidden around the campus. We have two Easter egg hunts, one for smaller kids there on this side, one for bigger kids on this side. So please do stick around and join us. And if there's not enough church for you today, we also have an 1115 indoor, an 1115 outdoor. So much going on. Do, we, do you want to give an announcement? Hello again. Rod Fisher here representing the young adult group, which is our 20s and 30s ministry. Now that Lent's over, we're back on our regular schedule. We'll be meeting 
again next Saturday, April 7th, 6 to 8 p.m. at Nurse Hall for food and fellowship. So we hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, I just want to say that Easter is for us a work of love by so many people, from our altar guild to our flower guild to our ushers to our incredible choir and musicians. It's just, I just want to give thanks to everyone involved in making today such a beautiful day. So thank you very much. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming, Lord. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine, Pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all men and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who are trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth now into your lives in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to all that is good, knowing that the living Christ is with you and for you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia.